in the previous video we talked about special formulas whenever we have right triangles with altitudes drawn in from the right angle to the hypotenuse. And those two formulas were the altitude formula and the lake formula. We mentioned that the lake formula could technically be used twice because we have two legs with two adjacent segments for each. And in this particular problem, we, since we're only focusing on the altitude from the original right angle to the original hypotenuse, we can technically only use this formula once. So now what we're going to do is just apply either one of these two formulas, and it could, we, could be that we could just use it once, or we might have a more complex problem where we're going to have to use it more than once. Now here's my pet dog Cujo. Cujo likes to get in and kill you know, animals and um, small people, so just ignore Cujo over there. So what we're going to look at first here in example one is we want to solve for x, and what you need to be able to first identify is the main question I always ask myself is, is the altitude labeled in this problem? Because chances are, if the altitude is labeled, whether it's what you want to know or it's something you do know, you're probably going to use the altitude formula. So the altitude in this particular problem is right here. It is the x. So chances are, we're only going to have to use the altitude formula. So I'll put the other formula over here off to the side, just in case. Maybe we'll need it, maybe not. So altitude is x, so this is x squared equals, and then segment 1 and segment 2 were the two pieces of the original big hypotenuse. And that would be our 4 and our 12. Does it matter which one is segment 1 and which one is segment 2? No, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to multiply them together, and we'll get x squared equals uh, 48. And so now if I want to solve for x, I'm going to have to square root both sides. And so I get that x is equal to the square root of 48. And you might ask, hey, are we done? Not quite. We have to simplify this as much as we can. So whenever we simplified square roots, I tried to portray that you really should look for perfect squares in as a factor of this particular number 48. And if you think about the, where we got the 48 from, we got it from 4 and 12. And 4 is a perfect square. Now the thing to note is there's also a 4 in the 12. So here's something I might do. Now you now let me just do it this way. 48 we could break down into 4 and 12, right? We've got square root, square root, square root. And this is going to give me a 2, but then I could break down the 12 into a 4 and a 3 and get an extra factor of 2. And so altogether we have 4 root 3. This is one way to go about it, is just to break down and re-break down if there's anything left that needs more breaking down, like the 12 did. What I would do is kind of set myself up, if you will. Like if I know 4 and 12 work, but I know there's a 4 in the 12, I just kind of think of it ahead of time here. Okay, So the 12 I can think of as 4 times 3, and any time that you take a perfect square and multiply it with another perfect square, you get an even larger perfect square. So if I think of this 4 times 4 as 16, 16 is a perfect square, like I just said. It's a larger perfect square. So I'm going to think of 48 as, instead of 4 times 12, I'm going to think of it as 16 times 3. So the square root of 16 and 3, well, the square root of 16 is 4, and the 3 has to stay behind. And then I don't have to do as much legwork. Okay? If I already kind of think about it ahead of time, uh, if I can think of perfect squares that are all going to be there, I could just combine them all together into one bigger perfect square. So there is x. It is 4 times the square root of 3. Example 2. So we look at this problem. We say, all right, right there, there's the altitude. You know what? It's not what I want to solve for, and it's not even a value that I know. So chances are we're going to throw that one out the window, and we're probably going to use the leg formula. Okay, so this was a leg, and this was a leg, and we don't know what this leg is, and we don't care to know what it is, so we're probably not going to be focusing our attention over there. We're going to be over here with this 240, okay? So this will be 240 squared, and then the adjacent hypotenuse segment, aka the segment that is adjacent to this leg, which is this guy right around the corner, it's 192. Now, the hypotenuse is this whole thing right here, the 192 and the y. 
added together. Not 192y, that implies multiplication, but we want to add those two pieces together. Now we've got a lovely large formula to work with here. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm not really good at um, multiplying those types of numbers. I can tell you that 240 squared, I believe, is 57,600, just because I know what 24 squared is. So let me break out my calculator. Yeah, 240 squared is 57,600. And then over here, I'll need to distribute my 192. So 192 times itself squared is 36,864 plus 192y. Subtract over my 36,864, and I get 20,736 equals 192y. Divide the 192 over, and I get 108. Now, you might ask, was there an easier way to do that problem? Not really. Um, yeah, you're pretty much stuck with that and dealing with those large numbers. Unfortunately so. Third example, we need to solve for x. Now again, notice first thing, x is an altitude. So chances are we're going to be dealing with the altitude formula. So I'm going to take my leg formula, put it off to the side. I'm not completely going to get rid of it because I might need to come back to it and maybe use it later. But probably not in this problem. So the altitude again is x, so I have x squared. And then I need segment 1 and segment 2. And at first glance, you might go, boom, 40 and 50. Those are my two segments. And you'd be mistaken on one of those. The 50 notice is going all the way across. This is the hypotenuse. Now, if this, which is one of our two segments, is 40, how much left over is this segment? That would be our second segment. And it would just have to be 10, right? Because 20 and 40 together makes our 10. So 20 and 40 multiplied together gives us 400 and if you know anything about larger perfect squares 400 is a perfect square it's 20 and there's x example four so first thing i look at find the altitude it's right here and i know it so chances are i'm probably going to use the altitude formula so let's put the leg formula off to the side here and so let's see altitude was this time this is six squared and segment one, segment two, well, those will be these two pieces that the altitude comes in contact with, right? It makes this 90 degree angle. So we got two and x are two segments that we're going to multiply together. And six squared is 36 equals 2x. Divide the two over, and x is 18. Okay. There's not everything, though. Because we have a second variable to solve for, y. Now notice y is a leg. So this is going to be a problem where we need to use not only the altitude formula, but also the leg formula. So the leg in question is y, so this is y squared. The adjacent hypotenuse segment is the one right around the corner, which is x. Oh, so it's a good thing I already figured out what x is, because that's what I would need to plug into there. So if x is 18, now the hypotenuse would be this whole thing which would be 2 plus 18, which makes 20. So now we can just drop this out of the way so we can get some space here. Now I need to multiply 18 and 20, which is going to be 360. And I need to square root to get the y all by itself. And so now I need to break down the square root of 360. Now, square root of 360, with 360, well, that's 36 times 10, and I know the square root of 36, which is 6. So that's how I'm going to break this thing down. Square root of 360 is the square root of 36 times the square root of 10, and that's going to give me 6 root 10. Can I break down 10? I can break it down into 2 and 5, but I can't do anything with those because they're not perfect squares. So y is equal to 6 times the square root of 10. And there are my two answers for x and y. Example five, we got three things to solve for here. First thing to note is we want to know what the altitude is and technically we want to know what both legs are. So we're probably going to be using both of these formulas. I always, just personal preference, always try to go with the altitude formula first. So let's see. 
The altitude in this case is y, so we have y squared. Segment 1, segment 2, well that's these two pieces, 9 and 7. So, I can multiply 9 and 7, but I can already see one step ahead. I'm going to have to square root both sides, right, to get the y all by itself. I'm going to leave the 9 times 7 the way it is, because 9 is a perfect square. So I know I'm going to break down 63 anyway into 9 and 7, so why even talk about it as a 63? So I'm just going to think of this as the square root of 9 times the square root of 7. And the square root of 9 is going to give me my 3, and the square root of 7 stays the square root of 7. And so there's y. 3 times the square root of 7. All right, clear some space off here. Now, we've used the altitude formula once, and that's all we can really use it. So I'm done with it. But now let's go to the leg formula. Now, which leg do we want to start with, x or z? We'll just start with x. Why not? Alphabetical here. So leg squared would be x squared. Its adjacent segment is the one right around the corner, which is the 9. And the hypotenuse would be this whole thing. So 9 plus 7 makes 16. Now. I can multiply 9 and 16 and get 144, which some of you might recognize as a larger perfect square. But 9 and 16 should be perfect squares that you recognize. So again, if I know I have to square root both sides here, I'm just going to do this. And so the square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of 16 is 4, and 3 times 4 makes 12. So x is 12, which is the same thing as the square root of 144, by the way. Now, z, a couple different ways you could do it, okay? I'm just going to throw this out here. We could use the leg formula all over again. So I'll move this over here, and we could talk about z squared as leg squared. Its adjacent segment is the 7, and earlier we said the hypotenuse was 16. Again, I could multiply this and get 112, or, since I know I have to square root, I'll just leave it this way because the 16 is a perfect square. So z will be equal to, the square root of 16 is going to give me 4, and that square root of 7 has got to stay put. And there's z, 4 root 7. Now, I mentioned another way that we could figure out that z was 4 root 7. If you think about it, the y value here, the altitude, was 3 root 7. And if you look at this, we have a right triangle where we know two of the side lengths. We know the 7 down here, and we know the 3 root 7 over here. So to figure out the third and final side of a right triangle, what could we use from way back in the day? Well, we could use, oh, if I can write this right, we could use the Pythagorean theorem. There's a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which in this case is z. Uh, since there is no junk in the trunk here, I can freely distribute those squared. So really I have 3 squared times the square root of 7 squared. And so that's going to give me 9 times, and these knock each other out. So it's really 9 times 7 plus 49. So this is 63 plus 49, which is 112. Okay, now I need to get rid of the square, so I need to square root both sides. And if I break down the square root of 112, it is, oh, 16 times 7, and I get 4 root 7 all over again. So you can use the Pythagorean Theorem. Will the Pythagorean Theorem always be available to you? No, it will not. Once you've worked your way through a multi-step problem, like example 5 here, then eventually you can use the Pythagorean Theorem. Technically, we could use the Pythagorean Theorem to get this leg, x, because, again, we knew these two sides, the 3 root 7 and the 9. So you didn't really have to use the leg formula at all in this problem. We could use Pythagorean Theorem twice, and then the altitude formula one time. All right, the last problem. So, first thing I notice is the altitude labeled. Here's the altitude. It's not labeled. I don't want to know it. Probably not going to use the altitude formula. So I'm going to throw it off to the side, but not fully get rid of it. We're going to try to use the leg formula now. So let's see what this is going to look like. Uh, the 2x plus 1, that is a leg. The 8 over here is the adjacent segment around the corner, and the whole hypotenuse would be x plus 8. So plugging in our values here, 
the 2x plus 1 that we need to square, technically we need to put that in parentheses because we need to square the whole quantity, 2x plus 1. The adjacent segment we said was the 8, and the hypotenuse, again, we need to put this in parentheses, is x plus 8. Now, over here on the right side, we can easily see we're just going to have to distribute this to get 8x plus 64. Now, on the left side, you might go, well, let's distribute the square. But with that plus sign, there's junk in the trunk. We may not distribute this. What we're going to have to do, and I'll put up here, is squaring something means we need to multiply it by itself. So we will have to FOIL, or what I like to call double distribute. We're going to distribute the 1 to the 2x plus 1, and we're going to distribute the 2x to the 2x plus 1, which is, again, FOILing. So once I FOIL that out, or double distribute, I should get 4x squared plus 4x plus 1 after I fully simplify everything. Now, hopefully by now you guys are catching on. I have a square term, I have not a squared term, and I have a constant. So am I going to be able to solve this thing like I normally would an algebra problem? No. This is probably going to end up being a factoring problem or a quadratic formula problem. The first thing I need to do, though, is move everything else. I need to subtract it over to the other side. So I'm going to subtract 8x over from the 4x. I'm going to subtract 64 from the 1. So that all I have over on the right side is 0. So I still have 4x squared. I have minus 4x from this. And I have minus 63 from the 1 minus 64 here. Now, again, I have a squared. I have a not a squared. And I have a constant term that equals 0. I'm going to have to try to factor this. And it's probably not going to be very much fun because I'm going to have to take 4 times this negative 63 and get negative 252 and find two numbers that add to be negative 4. Oh, geez, this is going to be a fun problem. So let me get some space in here. Okay, now let's drag this guy over and up. Now, if you don't want to mess with factoring this, you could jump into the quadratic formula. It's, again, going to be tedious, but it shouldn't be overbearingly tough. Now, oh, do I want to try to find two things that multiply to be that and add to be that? Or I could cheat real quick and just see if this thing will factor by using my handy-dandy calculator. Um, do, 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 do. I'm not condoning cheating. I'm condoning making this video as short as possible. So this will factor. So... What I, again, I would want to multiply the 4 and the negative 63, which again is negative. Those multiply to be negative 252. And I need to find those two numbers that also add to be this negative 4. So what two numbers multiply to be negative 252 and add to be negative 4? Well, I know one number needs to be positive and one needs to be negative. The larger number needs to be negative, so that when I add them together, I get a negative result. And I also know that these two numbers can only be four apart from each other. Okay? So, hmm. let me think. So, going through some options here, uh, I found out the numbers were negative 18 and positive 14. Okay? Those two multiply to be negative 252, and they add to be negative 4. It's tedious to try to figure out what these two numbers are. You just have to kind of guess and check, if you will, if the numbers are large enough that you can't just easily do it in your head. All right, so I'm going to have 4x squared, and I'm going to take the negative 18 with it first. So negative 18x, and then plus 14x, and then minus my 63. And then I look at the first two terms, and I want to pull out the greatest common factor, which would be a 2 and an x. And what would be left over after I pull out a 2x? Well, a 2x minus 9. Then I look at my other two terms. What's their greatest common factor? Uh, 7 can technically go into 14 and 63. What would be left over? 2x minus 9. Again, you want, more than anything, for those two leftover things to be the same. Because the next step we look at now is, what do these two things have in common? Well, they got the 2x minus 9s in common, so we're going to factor those out. And what's left over once I factor out a 2x minus 9? Well, what was really left over here? 
Think about that 2x9 being factored out and that one being factored out. What you see left behind is what goes in the other parentheses, the 2x and the plus 7. Okay. Now at this point, we get to set each one of these parentheses equal to 0. So 2x minus 9 equals 0 and 2x plus 7 equals 0. I'm going to add the 9 over and divide by 2 and get that x is 9 halves. I'll subtract the 7 over and divide by 2 and get that x is negative 7 halves. Now, algebraically, those are two good answers. Geometrically, I need to think about plugging these things back in, and I need positive lengths here. Well, if this is x, I know this can't be negative 7 halves, because that would give me a negative length, which means negative 7 halves, it's an algebra answer, but it's not a geometry answer. And we call that an extraneous answer or an extraneous solution. So the only real solution algebraically and geometrically that works is 9 halves. Because if I were to plug 9 halves back in, I would still get all positive results. Okay? So the two main formulas you absolutely need to have drilled into your head would be altitude squared equals segment 1 times segment 2. And leg squared equals, think about it as the adjacent segment, times the whole hypotenuse. And that's all.